All right, guys. Hello. We are um, ready, getting ready for our first lesson for environmental science. And with environmental science, the main um, the main idea of environmental science is um, the human aspects related to the environment. Ecology is just learning about photosynthesis and and food webs and food chains and how the environment works. That's what ecology is. Environmental science is how do we factor humans into that? All right, so with our class, what we're going to be doing is learning a lot of the human-based problems in the environment, like uh, nat uh, resources, oil, um, the environment with global warming, um, and then having how humans and animals can live together and, and share the planet. And that's where we're going to start today. We're going to start with the human-wildlife conflict. And we're going to start with, um, actually, elephants. All right, so we know that the elephants are endangered, and the elephants have to eat. But so do the farmers. All right, so you can't just say, let the elephants have all of Africa, when the Africans who live in Africa, they say, well, hey, we need to eat also. So part of environmental science is going to be balancing that kind of stuff out. So you see, I've started this on our web page. Um, let's go to environmental science, and then to down. You have to scroll all the way down here to chapter one. Within chapter one, uh, we have here is a whole bunch of um, good videos that we're going to need. Actually, one of them is going to be this human wildlife conflict is going to be part of our. Um, lesson for this chapter. There may be some others, but definitely that one you're going to need to scroll back up to here. But here is the parts about the elephant we're going to need. All right, so when you open this, this one here is our PowerPoint. I have that open on a different screen. I'll do that for you in just a second. So this is our PowerPoint. No, it's not. <laughs> Sorry. This one is the PowerPoint. All right, and um, this is the link. This is from World Wildlife Federation. So this is the link to the website of World Wildlife. So we'll go use that also in just a second. I'm going to open all of these up, but it's going to get crazy. Um, so this is the PowerPoint we'll be using. Um, this is the lesson worksheet. There are some questions that go with the PowerPoint, and there are these three articles right here. All right, and this lesson worksheet has the questions that go along the whole thing, so I just put it all together for the worksheet. So all of this is open on my screen, and I'll be opening it bits and purposes. But if it gets confusing, if it gets confusing, um, trying to figure out where I found all these bits, they're all right here, okay? So don't let yourself get freaked out. I'm going to start with our PowerPoint, and that should be here. All right, so... And go ahead and, well, I'm not going to full screen it. All right, that way I can find all the other stuff. But first off, apologies. You have to scroll the PowerPoint. It's from a crazy program um, that I couldn't get it to transfer any other way. So we're just going to scroll it. Sorry. One, one of the first things you'll learn dealing with Miss Gales, there's always something weird. And we always make arrangements. No problem. All right, so again, this is the website that this comes off of. All right, um, I'm going to let you read this yourself, but this is talking about um, the populations are getting bigger and bigger, and this is basically, we know this, okay? The populations of humans are getting bigger and bigger. They're encroaching on the space that the animals in Africa and everywhere else need, um, and so the animals aren't having enough room to forage or hunt or to look for mates and all that stuff, and that's coming across very, very big trouble. And so um, we know that elephants are herbivores. They eat plants and stuff. Well, the farmers, what are they growing in their gardens? They're growing plants. And we, um, we have learned to grow, I mean, not just corn, but really good corn and um, wheat and all sorts of amazing things because with our technologies of increasing plant production to feed ourselves, we have some really great plants. The elephants come by and they see the gardener's fields and this is not just regular jungle forage, this is good stuff. And um, so they come and they eat this vegetables that the gardeners are growing and it's good vegetables. And you know that, we know that elephants have a great memory. That's one of the coolest things about elephants. Elephants live a long time. 
All right, so they pass the information they have on down to their children. And that's one of the most amazing thing about elephants. Elephants have a culture. Elephants have a, I mean, they cry over their dead. They have particular places when an elephant is about to die, he goes to what is considered an elephant graveyard. That's a real thing. And the elephants periodically through the, through the course of the year will go to the elephant graveyard and they will actually cry and they will mourn their dead. That is culture. It's amazing, but that is culture. So if the elephants have that much culture and they are passing their information on to their children, they found your garden and your garden is amazing, full of corn and wheat and, and sugar cane and all sorts of amazing great things, they're gonna tell their kids, this is a great place to go for lunch. And elephants are huge. An elephant is not just gonna walk carefully through the garden, he's gonna crash through the whole thing. He's going to tear it to bits. Well, now the farmer doesn't have any food for his family. His children are starving. He is ticked off. He shoots the elephant. Well, his children are starving. So he shoots the elephant. That's part of the problem here. We know that the elephants are endangered. We know that they need to be cared for, but we also don't want this farmer's children starving. We don't want the children starving. How do you balance that out? The elephants are going to keep coming back to the same gardens once they found it. Shooting them is not an option. We need something better. All right, so that's what this is talking about. This is talking about better options. All right, so um, this question is here. I think it's on the worksheet. If not, just answer it to yourself. The human-wildlife conflict, what do you think I mean by that? Okay, and so from the elephant's perspective, okay, what do you think the elephants have? And what do you think the gardeners have? What about their perspectives? And who's right? What do we do? This is crazy, okay? And these are some of the vocabulary words you'll be using. And so, of course, since it's vocabulary, there's always a test. There's always a test. I believe um, there'll be a quiz at the end of this lesson, which I'm hoping the lesson will only take a week. That means the quiz will be on Friday. Um, I'm assuming the quiz will be on Friday, but you'll see it. It's listed in Schoolology, and it has the day-to-day -day, um, uh, day -day exercises in Schoolology. You'll see it. All right. All right, now this is one of the articles that I told you about. Um, she, uh, her brother was a wildlife officer designed to protect the animals, um, but also to work as a liaison between the animals and the gardeners. She watched her brother and she, and, um, you know, jobs are scarce. And so if she didn't want to just be somebody's wife in a baby factory, she had to get a job and these were one of the only jobs around. And so when she grew up, she became a wildlife officer as well. And this is a story of what her brother had to go through as being a wildlife officer and what she did. And she actually came up with, what did she do instead? She came up with some plans. All right. So this is one of the articles you'll be reading. It's this one, wildlife officer right here. All right, so, and it has questions. These questions should be copied, they are. They're copied again on the, the worksheet, so you can answer them onto the worksheet rather than answering them here. All right, and so, of course, if you're thinking about, if you're a farmer and you have elephants coming by, one of the first things you're gonna do is build a fence. Okay, that is a great plan, build a fence. It'll keep the, some of the smaller animals out, but look what's happening with this elephant. Do you think a fence is really going to keep an elephant out? Not if he really wants in. Okay, well then you can say, well, make it an electric fence. I'll put a big zap, you know. Won't kill him, but it'll teach him a lesson. Zap. Well, that's actually a good plan. Electric fences are a great plan. However, electricity comes at a premium in these places. Electricity they don't have. I mean, you can get solar sometimes. I mean, you can get solar. I mean, they've got plenty of sun. Getting the rigging and the setup for solar. Um, not everybody has that. So we got to come up with something else. They're, they're so smart. They're going to find a way around most of your stuff. Okay? All right, so the elephants are still getting through. Even, even the electric fences... 
because once you knock one of them down, everybody can go. So the elephants kind of talk to themselves, hey, let's take one. For you. So you, it's your turn. You take one for the team. So whoever's elephant has to fight their way through the electricity. It's only going to hurt for a second, and they know this. Fight their way through the electric fence, knock it down, and now all of a sudden everybody else can go through. Take one for the team. And then everybody's through. So even the electric doesn't really work. So they've got to find something else. All right. What they did, which is crazy, is making chili bombs. Okay? Um, chili bombs. They took the elephant dung, which is all over the place, dried out, and put hot pepper chilies. Have you ever eaten chilies, you know, spicy peppers, or somebody's cooking peppers, and you know what happens with onions, and your eyes start to water, okay? And your nose starts to run. Your nose starts to run. Elephants are nothing but nose. So if the chili peppers are going to bother your nose so badly, and our noses are relatively small, can you imagine what happens if the elephants get hold of all that chili smoke? That was their plan. So where it says here, down here, it says, um, watch the so slideshow. I have that open. Yeah, where do I have that open? I have that open here. Okay, that's from the main web page. Okay, so the slideshow is here. All right, and... I would love it if I could see the whole screen. Well, because there's words at the bottom and I don't want to cut off their heads. Anyway, so anyway, so here's where um, some of the wildlife officers are coming up and they're teaching the locals. The guards are helping to mon monitor the wildlife and they're showing the others how to make the chili bombs. So uh, yes, we are using elephant dung and yes, it is gross, theoretically. However, this is all dried out. So it's nothing more than dried clay or dried mud. And the, and the smell of the elephant is gone, mostly, by this time. All right, so what they do is it, you take the dried elephant dung and you break it up with their bare hands. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just basically dry dirt at this point. And then they add water to it and ground it into a paste. So they're making it, like, um, gooey. Yes, it's gross, but it's important. All right. Then they take this hot stuff, some of this extremely hot chili powder. I mean, crazy, crazy hot, all right? And they've ground up the chili powders, and they have to use rubber gloves because if they get this in their eyes and nose and mouth, they are going to be miserable for days and days and days. That's the whole point. It is miserable. It's hot. It it's burns. It hurts you. That's the point. So they're wearing their gloves. Okay, so they're mixing this with the, 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 the dung. And then, have you ever made mud pies when you were a kid? They're basically making mud pies with this, okay? So they put it in this shaper and let it dry, okay? Put it in a cake and leave it in the sun for several dries until it bakes, several days until it bakes hard. And what they've done before it baked, they stick this, um, stick this uh, wick in the candle. So it's basically, um, said like a wick, said like a wick of a candle, but it's like just a piece of rag or something that will burn inside the the patty okay and it will burn for up to eight hours you see that right there that's gonna be important up to eight hours all right and so what they have is they have guards positioned all around the gardens just like as if they were um fort knox or if you had a battle field that you had guards posted around the areas to keep an eye the elephants are pretty big you'll see them coming and so what they have is walkie talkies all right, and this one says, I see a herd of elephants coming there from, you know, coming from the south we, south at west. They'll be there in about, you know, 20, 30 minutes before they get to your garden. They run out, light the bombs in the garden, and then they run the heck back in the house, close the windows, because they don't want to be breathing this stuff. But while this smoke is burning, okay, this... You've seen smoke bombs in the in the in the TV shows, right? When the police are trying to scare everybody away, and they put up this smoke bomb, the smoke is everywhere. It makes you cough or whatever. So they put these smoke bombs out in the garden in various locations, light them. The people, the humans, get the heck out of the way. And when the elephants come by, the whole place is covered in this nasty fog, and they say, "Um, I think we'll go around," and they don't come to the garden at all. It's ingenious it's ingenious what they were able to do very 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 incredibly what incredible um and incredibly successful 
Okay, so they make the chili bombs and then they ignite them, and this horrible pungent means stinky, the p stinky and strong. So this sticky smell, and then they lit the chili bombs around the farmland whenever they heard the elephants. When whenever they get on the walkie-talkie, and the guards would tell them the elephants are coming. All right, and let's see what's next. Okay, and there's a here's a second article. It's also on the website here. Hang on, let me get back to the website. Yeah. There one using the chili bombs. Okay, uh, I've got too many things open. Okay, and then questions. Read it carefully. Here's the questions. Now, um, when I told you there's going to be a quiz over this chapter, where do you think I'm getting the information from these questions? And the questions are also a grade. So read carefully and answer carefully. All right. So they have all these great tools. Um, activity. We're not really going to do the activity. Okay. Um, but what this is, it is a scientific investigation. The reason I started it off first is because this is the scientific method in action. You know every class starts, every science class starts off by teaching you the scientific method. They always do. It's just, or if you haven't noticed, get used to it, get ready. Every class starts off by teaching you the scientific method, high school and college both. So they did use the scientific method, okay? With any scientific investigation, the first step, as with any scientific investigation, the first step is to identify the problem and ask a question. The problem is the elephants are eating our food. The question is, do we think this might help? Okay, ask a question. How can we make this stop? The hypothesis is, we think the chili bombs will scare the elephants away. That's the hypothesis. The hypothesis has to be something that can be tested, um, and it, it can... Yeah, you got this. Okay, so and then you die, this describe the experiment to test the hypothesis. So they, they designed the chili peppers. Do you think they um, got it right the first time when they were making these chili peppers? They probably didn't get it right the first time. Okay, that's another part of the scientific method is multiple trials. Okay, so you develop your hypothesis and then you experiment to test it. Okay, and then once you've experimented to test it, you measure it, you, and now here's the thing, you have to keep good records when you're doing a scientific method. If they, um, if they didn't measure the amount of chili powder, they had sometimes more, sometimes less, sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, would that be any kind of way to do an experiment? They need to decide how much makes it work. Now, not just how much how much to, to, to cause the effect in the elephants, but they didn't want too much. They certainly didn't want to hurt the elephants, and you didn't want to waste your chili peppers. Did you see how much he was dumping in there? That was a lot of chili peppers. They have to grow those chili peppers. So if you're putting more than you need in there, the farmers are having to do more work than they should have to do. You need just enough to make it work. You don't want to put too much or the farmers have to work too hard and you might hurt the elephants. So finding the right balance, and then once you find the right balance, continue to use that same balance each time. And it's like, so, um, and again, this is talking about when you think they got it right the first time. And what other tactics did they try? They tried the fences, they didn't work. They probably tried other recipes, okay? Um, and so, um, most experiments and most most innovations are um, created by somebody who needed something done. So uh, they say necessity is the mother of invention is what they say. You need something and then you invent it. Necessity is the mother of invention. Um, Oh, yeah, and this is talking about, because as I told you, this comes from World Wildlife Fund. This part is telling you that it is coming back. Um, the their tra They train, oh, I have a great video. I hope it's in there. I think it is. The great video of the, the, the wildlife guards, okay, the, the, the people who are trained to help um, the elephants and to help fight. They fight, not only are they helping the elephants, they are helping the farmers, um, they're fighting against poachers. Um, this is really, really amazing work that they do here. All right, and that's the end of the PowerPoint. This is what your lesson worksheet looks like. So you have the vocabulary again, you have the questions that go with that beginning, um, and again, you'll want to re-watch the, the PowerPoint while you're answering the questions um, and read it more carefully. I have, like I showed you, all the links all the links are right here. Um, part of the assignment will definitely be this human-wildlife conflict here. Um, it will be added into the, the other. And if one of these is my...
poaching video. If not, it'll be up here soon. All right, I've got to find my poaching video. But anyway, I hope that helps to um, get you started, help you see what the, the lessons are going to be about and how, how we're going to have everything set up. Um, they're not all going to be like this. Uh, when we After we move on to here, we're moving into your textbook. Um, and I'll show you more, more details on how to get to your textbook soon. All right, so I think that is everything. Um, you guys have a good day.